buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy. How can you truly enjoy the meal, unless you know the flavor? Ah, uh, welcome back, ABL fans. This is Big Earl, your trusted voice in action baseball league analysis, coming at you with our seventh installment of Deep Dive 25. Watch your fingers, because we're about to slice, dice, and dissect all the nuances of this great league. A heartfelt salute to the beat writer of the Tennessean for your direct, no-nonsense reporting with a folksy tone. We enjoy hearing you take on the team you cover like a glove. Okay. ABL fanatics, let's do this. Whether it's the Central Workhorses, the Western Wildcards, or the Eastern Powerhouses, we're covering it all. See it for yourself. Ah, the Nashville Blues in the Central Division of the ABC, a team that's always been a wild card in my book. Known for their solid coaching staff and a GM who's got a knack for scouting hidden gems, this team is never to be underestimated. Keep an eye on them folks, Nashville knows how to play the long game. If you're one of those folks who can't get enough of the nitty gritty, the ins and outs, the ups and downs of ABL baseball, then this deep dive is for you. It's like opening a box of Cracker Jacks, you never know what treasure you're gonna find. Ah, sip on some sweet southern iced tea and tune up that banjo, because we're diving into a squad as layered and captivating as Nashville's legendary music scene and rolling Tennessee hills. Question 1. How does the owner's personality and negotiation style influence the team's culture and performance? The Nashville Blues, a high-stakes gamble under Chris Smith's double-edged leadership. Chris Smith, the enigmatic owner of the Nashville Blues, is creating a high-stakes drama in the ABL with his paradoxical approach to leadership. On one hand, his micromanagement could generate unnecessary tension between the coaching staff and the front office, leaving players to second-guess every pitch and swing. On the other, Smith's intense personal investment might be the catalyst the Blues need to overhaul their bullpen and ignite their lineup. Straddling a fine line between benevolence and meddling, Smith's hands-on style has the Blues perched precariously between soaring success and crushing failure. Hold on to your hats, ABL fans. This season, the Nashville Blues are the team to watch, a riveting blend of promise and peril that could either skyrocket to new heights or plummet to a disappointing low. Question 2. What roles do the front office and coaches play in the team's success or struggles? Are they aligned with the owner's vision? The Nashville Blues front office, a jigsaw puzzle with a few missing pieces. Ah, the Nashville Blues front office and coaching staff are like a Sunday potluck. Everyone's brought something to the table, but you're not quite sure if it'll all taste good together. GM Justin Gomez is the cornbread to owner Chris Smith's chili, easygoing and personable, a perfect sidekick in the high-stakes game of player contracts. Now, manager Francisco Hernandez is a different kettle of fish. He's the vinegar to Smith's oil, and I'm not sure how well that's mixed in. Steve Dubuque, the bench coach, is preaching small ball like a country preacher on a Sunday, trying to get everyone to see the good book of fundamentals. And don't get me started on Walt Elliott, our pitching coach. The man's a firecracker and a teddy bear rolled into one, exactly what you need to keep those pitchers in line, especially when the owner's wringing his hands like he's got a bad poker hand. So, what's the verdict? This crew could either gel into a championship team or end up like a bad batch of moonshine, full of promise, but ultimately, just leaves you with a headache. Question 3. How does the team's financial health reflect in its performance? The Nashville Blues pocketbook play, walking the line between potential and peril. Ah, the Nashville Blues are like a country singer with a hit single, everyone loves them, but can they keep churning out the hits? Started off in 72 with fan interest hotter than a jalapeno, and now in 81, it's cool to a still spicy 93. They're packing the stadium to nearly 94% capacity, which ain't too shabby, let me tell you. But here's where the rubber meets the road. They've got a payroll of $8 million, total revenue knocking on 10 million's door, and a big old chunk of change set aside for trades. Looks good on paper, but this year's baseball, not an accounting exam. The owner's worry and wants to play .500 ball, can't blame him. So, the question we're all chewing on is, are they getting enough twang for their buck? They've got the fans, the market size that's bigger than a Texas stick, and a budget that ain't pocket change. But can they turn those dollars into dingers and those cents into championships? Time will tell. Question 4. How has fan interest evolved over time, and what does it mean for the team's revenue and player acquisitions? The Blues Fandom Blues, a balancing act between cheers and checkbooks, 
Ah, gather round, and let's talk about the Nashville Blues Fickle Flame of Fandom. Started off like a 4th of July fireworks show back in 72 with a fan interest of 99. But now in 81, it simmered down to a still respectable 93. Sure, the hardcore fans are still buying season tickets like hotcakes, but the gate and merch money is more like a slow drip than a gusher. With a budget of $13.4 million and a payroll at $8 million, they've got some room to make moves, but not enough to play it fast and loose. They've got $3.6 million squirreled away for trades, but don't expect them to go buying the farm. That dwindling fan interest is like a vice on their wallet, tightening a notch every time those numbers dip. It's a high wire act, my friend. They've got to keep the fans engaged, or that financial cushion they've got will deflate faster than a punctured tractor tire. Is it time for the blues to make a splash or tread carefully in these uncertain waters? Question 5. What is the current mood among the fan base, and how could it impact the team in the short term? The Nashville Blues fan base, a powder keg of passion and patience. Ah, uh, listen up, all you ABL aficionados. The Nashville Blues are sitting on a keg of dynamite, and the fuse is their fan base. Loyalty's good, not great, mind you, and fan interest has slipped a smidgen from 98 to 93. Now, the stadium's still bustling at nearly 94%, but there are a few more empty seats than the team would like. In the short haul, this jittery crowd could affect everything from the cash register to the dugout. The fans are ready to either cheer or jeer, and that puts the heat on the front office to make some snappy, crowd-pleasing decisions. And don't forget the media, always circling like hawks, ready to swoop in on any story that smells like discontent. It's a high-stakes poker game for the Blues, and their fans are both the chips and the dealers. This is the high-stakes tension that only baseball can bring. Question 6. How is the team faring in the league standings, and what factors are contributing to their performance? The Nashville Blues midseason muddle, a team teetering on the brink of breakthrough or breakdown. Well, pull up a chair, and let's talk some Blues baseball. They're sitting at 9-10, just two games back in the ABC Central Division, and let me tell you, they're as balanced as a seesaw. They can score runs, 104 of them, but they've also let 96 slip by, leaving them with a skimpy run differential of plus 8. Now, here's the kicker, these boys love their mama's cooking cause they're 4-2 at home but a dismal 5-8 on the road. Recent form? About as steady as a three-legged mule with a 4-6 record in their last 10 and a two-game skid. Strength of schedule ain't an excuse, it's middle of the road at .482. And when it comes to nail biters, they're split down the middle with a 1-1 one -one record in one-run games. So, what's it all mean? Simple. The Blues are stuck at a fork in the road. One path leads to Contendersville, the other to Mediocrity Junction. Which way they go is anybody's guess. Keep your eyes peeled, folks. This is getting interesting. Question 7. What are the team's odds of making the playoffs on a divisional and conference level? The Nashville Blues playoff puzzle. A long shot worth betting on? Hey there, all you ABL junkies. Gather round. The Nashville Blues are sitting in a funny spot when it comes to the old playoff picture. Division-wise, they've got a 22.9% shot at the playoffs, but a measly 2.7% chance of snagging the division crown. That's slimmer than a corn stalk in August. Now, look at the whole conference, and their playoff odds puff up to 35.5%. Not a sure bet, but enough to keep you from throwing your ticket stubs in the trash just yet. So, here's the deal. The Blues are the dark horse, the sleeper, the team you tell your buddies I told you so about if they make it. They're not a lock, but they're also not a lost cause. They're smack dab in the middle, where a hot streak or a bit of that baseball voodoo could make him the talk of the town. Are we looking at the little engine that could or the little engine that wished it could? Question 8. How do base runs and ELO ratings paint a picture of the team's true strengths and weaknesses? The Nashville Blues tale of two metrics, a team in baseball limbo. Listen up, all you ABL enthusiasts. The Nashville Blues are a riddle wrapped in an enigma, and base runs and ELO ratings are our decoder rings. Now, base runs give them a thumbs up with a positive run differential of 8, but hold the champagne, they've got a win percentage of just 0.474. So, they can score and defend, but when it comes to clutch time, they're fumbling in their pockets for answers. Then there's the ELO ratings. Started the season at 1486.3 and are now at 1488.5. That's a hiccup, not a jump. But hold on, their 7-day ELO ticked up to 1,493.0. So, are they getting hot or just lukewarm? 
Here's the skinny. The blues are like a car stuck between gears. They've got the engine, they've got the wheels, but they can't quite find the drive to zoom ahead or fall back. They're in baseball's no man's land, teetering on the edge of maybe and maybe not. Are these numbers the glimmers of hope or just fool's gold? Question 9. What does the team's war indicate about its most valuable players? The war tells the story, Nashville Blues in search of true stars. Alright, listen up, ABL fans. If you're wondering who's carrying the Nashville Blues, just peek at their war figures. With a batter war of 3.59, you can bet there are a couple of sluggers in the lineup making pitchers lose sleep. But don't get too giddy, their pitcher war sits at a modest 1.47. Yep, the men on the mound need to tighten their laces if they want to dance in the big games. The total war of 5.05 puts them smack dab in the middle of the ABL food chain, neither predator nor prey, just floating along. Interestingly, a wins minus war of 3.95 suggests they might be doing a little bit better than their raw talent indicates. Could be good old team chemistry, could be the skipper's doing, or maybe they found a lucky horseshoe. Either way, this team needs its would-be stars to step up and shine if they're aiming for the big stage. So, should we have faith in the Blues key players, or are we waiting for someone to really break out? Question 10. How have injuries impacted the team's performance and depth? Dodging the injury bullet, Nashville Blues skating on thin ice. Hey there, ABL fans. If you're keeping tabs on the Nashville Blues, here's some good news. They've been pretty darn lucky when it comes to injuries. Just one player hit the DL, costing them a scant 21 days and a mere $48.7,000 in salary. Now, that might sound like they're walking on sunshine, but let me tell you, even one injury can shake things up in ways you might not expect. Sure, they've not had to dig deep into the minors or scramble for trades, but don't forget, baseball's a fickle mistress. One key player goes down, and you can find your season going south faster than a duck in winter. Is Lady Luck smiling on the blues, or is she just lulling him into a false sense of security? Question 11. What do the team's batting statistics reveal about its offensive capabilities? Swinging blues, Nashville's bat game holds promise and pitfalls. Well, ABL fans, if you're looking for a team that knows how to swing the lumber, don't overlook the Nashville blues. Boasting a sizzling .312 batting average and a respectable .371 OBP, these guys aren't just stepping into the batter's box, they're owning it. They can knock the ball around, get on base, and even pack a bit of punch with a .454 slugging percentage. But don't start printing those championship banners just yet. Their isolated power sits at a modest .143, telling us they're not gonna send too many souvenirs into the stands. Plus, the 21 ground into double plays and a meager 6.75% walk rate say they could use a lesson or two in patience and base running smarts. Are the Blues bats good enough to serenade them into the postseason, or do they need a few more power cords in their lineup? Question 12. How does the pitching staff stack up against divisional and conference competition? Mound Troubles, Blues pitching staff needs a tune-up. Listen up, ABL fans, if you're wondering how the Nashville Blues are faring on the mound, I got three words for you, room for improvement. These boys can coax a ground ball like a Nashville guitarist can pluck a banjo string, boasting a 52.5% ground ball rate. They're also decent at stranding runners with a 68.9% left on base percentage. But don't go popping the champagne corks yet. Their ERA is a bloated 4.75 and the fielding independent pitching ain't much better at 4.59. And if you're hoping for strikeouts, better wish upon a star. Their strikeout percentage sits at a measly 14.4%, while they're giving up walks at a 7.84% clip. In simple terms, they ain't fooling enough hitters and it's catching up to them on the scoreboard. Are the Blues arms up to the task, or do they need some fresh fire from the bullpen? Question 13. Are the team's fielding statistics a strength or a weakness? The Blues' defensive dilemma, flashes of brilliance, clouds of inconsistency. Well, folks, if you're looking for a defensive juggernaut in the Nashville Blues, you might want to keep Sear Chan. Sure, their catchers have a gun for an arm, nailing runners at a 46.15% clip, and they've turned 16 double plays, nothing to scoff at. But here's where the water gets muddy. They've got a total zone rating sitting in the negatives at minus 3.82 and a defensive efficiency of just 0.688. That means they're missing chances to turn batted balls into outs. Throw in 13 errors, and you've got yourself a fielding unit that's more roller coaster than steady ship. So, is the Blues defense giving you jitters, or do you reckon they'll find their footing? Question 14. What do base running stats say about the team's tactical approach? 
The blues bass running, a dash of savvy in a game of inches. Well, pull up a chair and let's chat, folks. The Nashville Blues are showing they've got some smarts when it comes to the bass paths. With a stolen bass percentage of 71.4%, these boys know when to kick up some dust and swipe a bag. And let's not forget their weighted stolen bass run sitting at a near-perfect 0.97, almost like fending a dollar bill in your old pair of jeans. Now, they ain't perfect, caught stealing four times tells you they're human. But overall, they've got that blend of caution and aggression, like a fox in a hen house. Gives them that extra edge in a game where every run counts. Is this bass running the secret sauce for the blues, or just a dash of spice in a bigger recipe? Question 15. Who are the standout performers in batting, and what do their stats reveal? Blues batting stars, a symphony of swats and swipes. Ah, gather round, ABL enthusiasts. It's high time we talk about the Nashville Blues sluggers and snipers, the fellas who make the leather pop and the ball fly. First off, tip your hat to Andre Salas, the first baseman with a .453 average. This guy's not just hot, he's sizzling like bacon on a Sunday morning. Then we got Juan Grant, the man who's practically got a reserved seat on first base with his .474 OBP. Don't overlook Jose Orozco, either. When he swings, it's either go big or go yard, leading the team with three homers. Jordan Ortega is the clutch man you want when the chips are down, sporting a .361 AVG. And let's give a nod to the wily veteran, Brett Petrillo, who's still cracking a .292 AVG at the ripe age of 36. In short, the Blues lineup is like a well-stocked fishing tackle box. Whatever you need, they got it. Question 16. Who are the key figures in the pitching staff, and how do they influence games? The Blues Mound Mix, a blend of fire and fizzle. Ah, sit a spell, folks, cause we gotta gab about the Nashville Blues hurlers, the fellas who tow the rubber and throw the old horse high. Antonio Hernandez is the experienced hand of the lot, steadying the ship with a 4.56 ERA. He's the grandpa at the family picnic who knows just how to grill the burgers, solid, but not extraordinary. Then there's Sal Serrano, a fireballer with control issues as wild as a raccoon in a trash can. Kid's got a 7.80k slash 9, but those walks are a real thorn in his side. And don't forget Alex Alvarez. His 9.15 ERA could scare a scarecrow, but his FIP of 5.11 says he's had more bad luck than a black cat crossing his path. So, there you have it, a pitching staff that's a potpourri of promise and pitfalls. Are these pitchers half full glasses of sweet tea, or are they just spilling it all over the table? Question 17, who excels in base running and fielding, and how do they impact the game's outcome? The nuts and bolts, blues unsung game changers. Well, pull up a chair, baseball aficionados, cause we're gonna chat about those gents who are stealing bases and snagging line drives for the Nashville Blues. On the base paths, we've got one Grant, who's as reliable as a hound dog on a hunt, three steals, and hasn't been caught napping yet. Then there's Andre Salas, the man's not just swinging lumber, he's also swiping bags like a kid in a candy store. Now, let's tip our caps to Marco Figueroa, the shortstop who's slicker than a greased pig at a county fair. A zone rating of 1.245? That's more golden than grandma's cornbread. So there it is, a few of the blues unsung heroes, making a difference one stolen base and one snag grounder at a time. Question 18. What does the team's age demographic reveal about its experience and future potential? Age and Sage, the Blues blend of youth and experience. Well, gather round, baseball fans, because we're about to talk about the years, not just the stats. The Nashville Blues have got themselves a balanced team, age-wise. Up in the majors, the average age is tickling 30, which means they've got some seasoned cowhands who've been to a rodeo or two. Down in AAA, it's about the same story, lots of players who've seen some sunsets and have a few tales to tell. But don't go thinking this team's all gray whiskers. Nope, down in AA and single A, they've got a bunch of youngsters faster than greased lightning, especially those 23-year-old pitchers in Class A. So what we've got here is a blend of old wisdom and young spunk, kind of like mix in a bit of bourbon with your sweet tea. You think the blues are cooking up the right recipe with this age mix, or do they need a dash of something else? Question 19. Who has had the best batting and pitching games, and what do these performances signify for the team? A tale of two titans, standout performances in the Blues lineup. Ah, uh, let me tell you, folks, the Nashville Blues have had some moments that are sweeter than Grandma's pecan pie. On the batter's box side, it's Jose Orozco, who's been hotter than a $2 pistol. 
This fella's had not one, but two games where he's been nigh untouchable, racking up hits and RBIs like they're going out of style. Then there's Chang Ho Lee, who had a game that was nothing to sneeze at either. On the mound, Antonio Hernandez put on a show that would make even Johnny Cash take notice. Eight innings pitched, just one run allowed? Son, that's what we call shut him down where I come from. These fellas aren't just putting numbers on a scoreboard, they're giving the team and fans something to believe in. These are the kind of games that can spark a fire and turn a season from maybe to you betcha. Do you reckon these performances are a sign of good things to come for the Blues, or are they just flash in the pan moments? Question 20. What does your gut tell you about this team in the 1981 championship season and the Grand Tournament of Champions? Blues 1981 run, on the cusp of glory or just a tease? Uh, let me give it to you straight, all you ABL aficionados. The Nashville Blues are like a good old country song, full of highs and lows, heart and heartbreak. They've got some boys who can swing lumber like Paul Bunyan. I'm talking about Jose Orozco and Andre Salas. And don't forget Antonio Hernandez, who's steady on the mound like a grandpa in a rocking chair. But here's the rub, when we talk about diving deep into the Grand Tournament of Champions, well, let's just say they're pitching depth shallower than a kiddie pool in August. They've got the spark, the spunk, and some real gumption, but do they have that extra oomph to go all the way? My gut tells me they'll dance in the G2C, but as for clinching the big prize, they might just be a fiddle short of a full bluegrass band. Do you think the Blues have what it takes to bring home the bacon, or are they still frying small potatoes? Question 21. What is the team's history in the Grand Tournament of Champions? The Blues in the G2C, longing for a second verse. Well, if the Nashville Blues history in the Grand Tournament of Champions were a country song, it'd be a one-hit wonder from 73, and not the kind that keeps you humming. Just one trip to the big dance, and they got shown the door quicker than a skunk at a garden party, courtesy of the New York Aces. They haven't even sniffed the Conference Series or the Grand Series. Talk about leaving a fella hungry for more. But here's the deal, they've been cooking up something special lately, and it smells like they're itching to add a few more verses to that old, lonely tune. You think these new age blues got the chops to make 73 look like ancient history, or are we in for another sad ballad? Question 22, what is the team's history in previous seasons? The blues historical roller coaster, a tune of ups and downs. Listen up, folks. If the Nashville Blues were a country album, they'd have one hit single from 73 and a whole lot of filler tracks started off in 72 with a record that was more ho-hum than hot stuff. Hit a high note in 73, but it ended in a sour chord when they got booted in the Division Series. Then they waltzed through the mid-70s and late-70s like they were stepping on rakes, mostly finishing in the back of the pack with no encores in the playoffs. Had a couple of almost decent years in 79 and 80, but still no fireworks. Now, in 81, they're sitting at 9 to 10 and the jury's still out. Over the years, they've been as inconsistent as Grandma's Wi-Fi, and that lone 73 playoff appearance is starting to collect dust. Fans are loyal but impatient, and the pocketbook ain't limitless. Reckon the Blues can finally write a new hit this season, or are we stuck replaying the same old tunes? Question 23. What's your take on last season? The 1980 Blues, a high-priced flock. Ah, uh, the 1980 season for the Nashville Blues, more like a country ballad of heartache than a rockin' anthem. With a payroll that would make a Hollywood producer blush, they churned out a 75-87 to 87 record that had folks wondering where the money went. Stuck in third place, a canyon away from the leaders, they hit for a whole on .254 and boasted an ERA that was more med than magnificent at 3.99. A bobbip of .287 suggests they weren't cursed by the baseball gods, just painfully average. Despite the letdown, 1.6 million fans showed up, maybe hoping for a miracle that never came. Ended the year with over $3 million in the bank, but you gotta ask, was that cash doing any good sitting there? All in all, they were like a big budget movie that was all trailer and no substance. You reckon this was just a one-off year of blues for the blues, or is this the theme song for bigger problems? Question 24. How does what happened in the 1980 season reflect on the 1981 early campaign? The 1981 Blues, a shadow play of yesteryear? Well, folks, the 1981 Nashville Blues look like they're still singing some of those 1980 blues. Kicking off at 9 to 10, they're not exactly erasing memories of last year's stumble. Despite sitting on a pretty financial cushion from 2020, any big moves they might have made are still waiting to pay off. The pitchers are already huffing and puffing with a 4.75 ERA, while the batters have picked up the pace, hitting .312, but don't bet the farm on it yet. 
Fans are showing up, but you better believe they're keeping a sharp eye on that scoreboard. The ghost of 1980 is lurking in the dugout, and every decision from the skipper's seat to the bullpen is gonna be like chopping wood, every swing analyzed. So here's the pickle. Did they learn their lesson from last year, or are we watching a rerun with a new coat of paint? Are the Blues turning up for a new hit single, or are they just replaying their old records? Question 25. What is your take on the current roster? The 1981 Blues, a mixed bag of promise and perils. Well, pull up a chair and let's chew the fat about these 1981 Nashville Blues. Seems like we got a roster of folks who can either make us cheer or spill our popcorn. Arthur Blinn and Antonio Hernandez are the Clydesdales of the pitching staff, but Sonny, they're wearing out their hooves. Alex Alvarez? Might as well roll the ball to the plate with that 9.15 ERA. Then we got Andre Salas and Jose Orozco, swinging like they're knocking apples off a tree. But don't get me started on Carlos Chavez, man couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. The outfields got spunk, but Hector Chavez needs to shake off the cobwebs. Throw in an injury to Enrique Lafarga, and you get yourself a pot of gumbo that's missing some spice. So, are these blues gonna sing a victory tune, or is it just the same old sad song from 1980? You think this year's blues got a shot at glory, or is it another season of close but no cigar? Well, there you have it. You're up close and personal deep dive into the Nashville blues. We've dissected their strengths, weaknesses, and everything in between. We've peeked into the owner's suite, dug into the dugout, and even scoped out the fans in the bleachers. And let me tell you, what a ride it's been. Like a well-pitched game, we've covered all the bases. But remember, baseball is a game of unpredictability. Just when you think you've got it figured out, it throws you a curveball. Ah, the Nashville Blues, a team that's been pruning their way through the regular season like a Grand Ole Opry headliner. But come the Grand Tournament of Champions, they've been more like an opening act. Will they finally find their rhythm and take center stage, or are they destined to be the perennial undercard in the ABL's grand musical score? The blues tale is far from over, and the next chapter promises to be a page turner. Big Earl here folks, keep your eyes peeled for future reports as we navigate through the twists and turns of another gripping ABL season. So, whether you're a fan of the blues, baseball blues that is, or just love the game, the best is yet to come. Until next time, this is the game. See it for yourself. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself.